Each weekday morning, we go through newspapers from all across the country to pick up the stories that you'd pick for yourself if you had nothing but time. Here's our top choice today. My favorite story today comes from the Washington Post, mainly because of the photo. The lonely father with binoculars watching a kid's soccer game. The headline is 100-yard penalty on players' parents. Misbehaving soccer parents have been told they must stay about 300 feet away from the field. The front page of the Miami Herald today has an update about those 21 horses that died Sunday at the U.S. Open Polo Tournament. A mysterious poison is now being blamed for the deaths. Authorities say foul play is not suspected but an investigation has been opened. The headline on the back page of the New York Daily News is Homer's Odyssey, just four games at the new Yankee Stadium so far, 20 home runs. Meteorologists at AccuWeather did an analysis yesterday. They think there may be a wind flow through the new stadium that is lifting the balls up into right field. British talent show sensation Susan Boyle's been offered a million dollars to appear in an adult movie. The California producers say if the 47-year-old gives them the go-ahead, they will book a seat immediately and fly her to Hollywood on Virgin Airlines. Not quite 100 days into his administration, President Obama asked his cabinet to make a symbolic $100 million budget cut. The New York Post tries to put that into perspective. It is 0.0027% of the federal budget. To explain how tiny the cut is in another way, the Post says it's like a family earning $50,000 a year being asked to cut spending by a buck 35. On the 100-day theme, the Los Angeles Times compares Barack Obama's first 100 days to the 103 days it took Roosevelt to enact the main elements of his New Deal in 1933. In a front-page story, Doyle McManus concludes the first 100 days can be an unreliable guide to the eventual legacy of a president. The Detroit News says after top executives refused strict limits on their compensation, the Chrysler Finance Division has rejected $750 million in new help from the Treasury Department. According to the LA Times, there's a missing metric for gauging the health of the economy. It is the Tunnel Index. The paper has a report from the 2nd Street Tunnel. It's a popular site on the West Coast to shoot car commercials. Since 2006, 73 commercials have been shot there. None are booked for 2009. The Chicago Sun-Times columnist Richard Roper looks at the feud brewing between Perez Hilton and Miss California over her comments about same-sex marriage. Roper asks, really? He writes, uh, Miss California should not be asked about same-sex marriage any more than President Obama should be asked about Miss USA. Are you addicted to fat and sugar? Former FDA chief Dr. David Kessler writes in his new book that your brain can be retrained to avoid some of these temptations. That report in the Arizona Republic today. Is pomegranate juice a drinkable fountain of youth? The Washington Post interviews the makers of Palm, which promises in its advertising to help you cheat death. The company has several small-scale studies to support its health pitch, but there is little conclusive evidence, the story says. The first IHOP pancake house is opened in Vermont. The New York Times says the owners have been granted a special exemption from the usual company policy everywhere else in the U.S. Uh, they, they only serve corn syrup at the other restaurants, but the Vermont IHOP will offer maple syrup. Finally, our fashion designers making the grade. The Wall Street Journal had experts evaluate the cheap, chic stores. Uh, things that are on the shelves in Target or H&M to see how they stack up to their more expensive counterparts. Some of them did pretty well. Others were not particularly well made. We do this every day at patspapers.com. If you go to the main page on our website, you will find links to all of these stories, which will take you to read them at the individual newspaper websites.